just a moment. Is the screen visible to all of you right now? Yes, ma'am. OK. So today we will start with our last topic of this course, which is called the Introduction to Unsteady State Heat Transfer. Now, till now, whatever we have done have all been steady state problems. That means we had considered that the temperature at a given point and the heat flux they did not change with time. No matter how much time what had elapsed, those values had remained constant one, once we reached steady state. Now, but in reality, we have several situations where this is not the case. That means the temperature at any point, at any point, uh, that means at a fixed uh, distance, might change as the time changes. And such processes are essentially known as the unsteady state heat transfer processes. But till now, we have not considered any of these unsteady state cases. But uh, there is, we will only do a little bit of this unsteady state processes. And that is why this section is called the introduction to unsteady state processes. We can go a lot more deeper if you want to. I will do a bit. But uh, um, of course, there's been much more that can be done. So for this section, if you want to look at a textbook, you can look at Genkopolis. I had sent you a soft copy of that book. And uh, you can look at the unsteady state heat transfer section from Genkopolis more than any other textbook. So where is uh, such unsteady state heat transfer processes important? Now, in the industrially, you will see that there are several heating and cooling problems where we see heat transfer, which is essentially unsteady state in nature. For example, if you go to any of these iron and steel industries or the metallurgical industries, you have studied probably the quenching process. What is quenching? You take a very hot body and you suddenly dip it in a, in a very cold water or air or whatever so that the temperature comes down very quickly. So when you have such quenching processes, there is not enough time to reach steady state. So the process that happens at that condition or the cooling process, or in some cases also the heating process, these, are, uh, these will follow unsteady state conditions. So we have to find out the time which is taken for the body to uh, the temperature of the body to come down to a certain value or a temperature uh, body to get heated up to a certain value. Similarly, when we try to uh, in the food industry, when we are trying to preserve food, what uh, some certain canned foods are suddenly heated by immersing it in steam baths. That means you introduce inside a steam bath at a, a, a very quickly or you can quickly bring down the temperature by immersing it in cold water. The speed of these processes are always very high. Then, for example, in the paper industry, as we say, the logs of wood, which are then used to convert it into paper, these are uh, immersed or introduced inside steam baths before they are processed. So all of these processes which happen industrially uh, are under the, can be categorized as unsteady state processes. So when you want to study unsteady state processes, or the there are two kinds of models which are involved. One is called the lumped parameter model, and one is called the distributed parameter model. Now let us try to understand a little bit about these two models. I will try to explain things to you as simply as I can. So in the lumped parameter model, uh, let me just get the, hold on the pointer. Okay. In the lump parameter model, the temperature of the body is assumed to depend only on time and not on position. So what does it mean? Suppose we have a copper ball like this. So when we have, there could be two possibilities. The temperature can change with time and the temperature can change with position. So if you remember when we were talking about, uh, say, for example, in a steady state, we heat transfer through a wall. When we were talking about conduction, et cetera, what did we have? We had a constant temperature out here and the temperature dropped across the wall and it was a flat after that. So this the here, what has ha happening that the temperature was changing with respect to position. If this was uh, X in the X direction, the temperature was changing with respect to position, but not respect uh, changing with respect to time since this was a steady state process. 
Now here, when we are talking about this copper wall, you can see that I have written a temperature of 70 degrees all at all places inside the copper wall. So what does that mean? That the temperature is same at different positions of the copper wall, but it, the temperature does not remain constant with time. So as time changes, this value of 70 degree will not remain constant. It will change. So it depends only on the time and not on the position. So any, if you measure the temperature at either this point or in the center or on this side, you will get the same temperature. So when you're trying to understand a body like this, the, uh, by a model which is, which is like this, this is called the lumped parameter model. So when is such a thing possible? This is one, one of the things that is uh, that where you can have a successful use of a lump parameter model is when the size of the body is small. That means we do not have a big body where there could, there could be a temperature variation. So size of the body is small. That could be one reason. Or it can have very high thermal conductivities. So high thermal conductivity essentially means low resistance. So high thermal conductivity means heat gets transferred very easily inside the body. As a result of which the temperature more or less remains constant at every position inside the body. So the temperatures at different positions can be assumed to be equal and only vary with time. In the other model, which is called the distributed parameter model, the temperature in the system depends both on position as well as time. So this is a, if, you, if it's a piece of cooked food, you will see that the center, for example, is at a much lower temperature than the surface. So when you're baking a cake, you will see that the surface of the cake might get cooked, but the inside of the cake will not get cooked. So what we do is we uh, insert some kind of a needle or something and take it out and see if the inside is cooked or not. So this is what it is, that there's a variation in temperature because of position, as well as there's a variation in temperature with respect to time. So if this is the initial condition, as the time increases, the temperature at each position will be different and there will be a variation out here also. And with time, the temperatures are going to be changed, are different. So here in a distributed parameter model, the temperature of the system depends on both position as well as time. So now let us try to derive the unsteady state conduction equation. So we consider uh, a cube, for example, and the size of the cube is delta x. This side is delta y. And this side is delta z. So these are the three, uh, the lengths of the uh, uh, delta x, delta y, and delta z, the lengths of the three sizes, uh, sides of the cube. And uh, this is the x direction. Obviously, this is the y direction. And the perpendicular that, to that is the z direction. Now let us consider the rate of heat flow only in the x direction. So this is where the heat enters this cube. The rate of heat flow is qx, because this uh, subscript x denotes the x direction. And uh, this x out here denotes the position at which we are con considering the heat flow. So this is qx at position x. And the heat that goes out of this cube is qx at x plus delta x. Now, the x, uh, we are, uh, now if I look at it, what is qx? qx is equal to minus ka del t del x. Why del t del x? Because all the other variables, that is y, z, and t, that is time, is constant at this position. So this is the rate of heat conduction that is happening in the x direction. Now let us try to make a heat balance on this particular cube. Now we are considering unsteady state systems. You remember that. So the rate of heat input is equal to qx at x, which can be written as minus k instead of a, which is area. What is the area which is perpendicular to the rate of heat flow? The area is delta y into delta z. That is the area which is perpendicular to the rate of heat flow into del t del x at position x. Rate of heat output, which is out here, going out from here, is qx at x plus delta x. So this is equal to minus k del y. Again, the area is the same. That means del y into del z, del t del x at x plus delta x. The position has now changed. Rate of heat generation is if q dot is the amount of heat generated per unit volume, then q dot multiplied by the volume will give you the rate of heat generation. And what is the volume? Delta x, delta y, and delta z. Then comes the rate of heat accumulation. 
the rate of heat accumulation can be written as mcp delta t and mcp delta t that is mass into cp into delta uh, change in temperature due to change in time mass again can be written mass of the cube can be written in terms of volume into density so del x del y del z is the volume into the density gives will gives me the mass of the cube multiply the specific heat that is cp value change in temperature due to change in time that is the rate of heat accumulation now if you put it in the heat balance equation rate of heat input minus the rate of heat output plus the rate of heat generation is equal to the rate of heat accumulation if we are considering steady state conditions this one would have been written as equal to zero but here we don't have a steady state we have unsteady state conditions so what we do is we divide everything by the volume that is delta x delta y and delta z and then take limit delta x tending to zero so this becomes this minus and minus becomes a uh, plus this is now divided by del x let me just get my pen this is divided by del x del y del z so the del y and del z cancels out with this del y del z which is out here and when you have this divided by delta x and you take limit delta x tending to 0 this becomes equal to k del 2t del x2 and since you are dividing by del x del y del z this becomes only q dot and what is left out here is rho cp del t by del t that means change in temperature due to change in time capital t is temperature small t is equal to time so if i divide the expression by rho cp what i get is on the on one side i have del t del t is equal to k by rho cp by del 2t by del x2 plus q dot by rho cp now if you remember this was equal to thermal diffusivity k by rho cp or equal to alpha this is something we had seen earlier what is alpha so del t del t is equal to alpha del 2t del x2 plus q dot by rho cp this is the equation that we get when we are considering the heat flow only in one direction but heat flow can also be in the y direction and it can also be in the z direction so if i consider all the three directions what will happen i am considering all the three directions but i am also considering that alpha that is thermal diffusivity is the same for all three the directions so if i can take alpha common so instead of writing only del 2t del x2 i have to consider the other directions also that is del 2t del x2 plus del 2t del y2 plus del 2t del x2 uh, sorry del z2 this multiplied by alpha plus q dot by rho cp is equal to my change in uh, temperature due to change in time so if you just look at it in from one direction there's a relationship between temperature time and distance if we solve this we will be able to get out the how the temperature of a body varies by position as well as with respect to time now if i consider that the rate of uh, rate of heat generation is equal to zero then this becomes a, a simpler case of del t del t is equal to alpha del 2t del x2 and the other term goes out so if i consider all three put their directions it is del 2t del x2 plus del 2t del y2 plus del 2t del z2 this is when we are not considering the uh, what is what we call as the the rate of heat generation but the only the variations which are there is how the temperature changes with respect to time and position in the x direction y direction and the z direction alpha is something which is thermal diffusivity which is essentially what was equal it equal to it was equal to k by rho cp these are all physical properties and can be separately calculated out so let us sorry so let us right now talk a little bit about the uh, lumped parameter model that's what we are going to discuss today so what is the lump parameter model this is when we said when there is negligible internal resistance so the unsteady state or transient heat conduction conduction is considered for systems where which we may can which are considered to be uniform in temperature this is called the lumped heat capacity model or the lumped parameter model in some books you will find the lumped heat capacity model also 
Now, this lump parameter model, I insist that you uh, listen to it very carefully because you will have a lot of gate questions. This is the simplest one in terms of, in case of unsteady state heat transfer. And if you go through the gate questions, you'll see that you have, over the years, there have been several questions asked on this lump parameter model. So, the lump parameter model is possible. That means you can consider that in, a, in the case of a body, the temperature at any position of the body can be considered to be the same when we have very high thermal conductivities. Very high thermal conductivities means very low internal conductive resistance compared to the external surface resistance. So inside the resistance is very low, so that it is a uniform temperature throughout from here to here. But outside it may be different, so the temperature, there could be a temperature drop out here in the outer surface. So the resistance to heat flow is much more at the surface than what is inside the body itself. And uh, that is big when this is possible, we have very high thermal conductivities. So high thermal conductivities, that means K values are large. Also, this is possible when we have a small sized bar body, that means uh, the physical size of the body is small. When the physical size of the body is small, what does it mean essentially? That because uh, the size is small, the temperature will hardly any temperature variation between different positions. And hence, we can say that the lump parameter model will work under these conditions. So let us try to understand this lump parameter model uh, a little bit more mathematically. So what do we have? Let us say we have a body like this. Okay. So this body at a time t equal to 0, at a time t equal to 0, has got an initial temperature of t equal to ti. Ti stands for initial. And this body, this is a hot body, say for example, is suddenly immersed inside a cold bath. The temperature of the liquid and the cold bath is say equal to T infinity, T subscript infinity, and T infinity is less than Ti. So this is a hot body and this is a cold bath. So basically you take a heated ball and you put it in cold water, that kind of situation that's there. So the temperature of the water, which is uniform throughout, and uh, it is less than the initial temperature of the body. We also make a small amount of assumptions out here that the heat transfer coefficient remains constant with time. This does not change with time. And, uh, and the temperature, or that is the sub temperature of the liquid, that is the cold water in this case I'm talking about, also does not change with time. It's held constant with time. Now, if I make a heat balance over a small time interval dt, over a time interval dt, then we can say that the rate of heat transfer from the bath to the object must be equal to change in the internal energy of the body. That means whatever energy heat is going out from, uh, from here, from the body to the liquid, okay, from the bath to the body, that when the heat transfer which is there, which could be a heat loss or a heat gain, is equal to the change in the internal energy of the body. Change, why, why are we using the word change? Because the internal energy of the body might increase or it might decrease. Suppose this is a hot body and this is cold water, heat will be given out. But if this was a cold body and the liquid was hot, then heat will be gained by the body. So that is why we use the word change, whether it is increase or decrease, doesn't matter. So suppose this uh, solid uh, body has got a volume of V, the area equal to A, density is rho, heat capacity is Cp, then the heat uh, balance can be written as Ha T infinity minus T. T infinity is the temperature of the liquid. T is the temperature of the body, for example. H is a heat transfer coefficient. A is the area. So this is the rate at which of the rate of heat transfer from the bath to the object. And this is the rate of increase in the internal energy of the body. That means M Cp dt by dt. So m is written as rho into v of the body into specific heat of the body, change in temperature due to change in time. So if we write all the temperature terms, take the temperature terms to one side, that is dt divided by t infinity minus t, that means you're taking it this side. And uh, so this ha is now divided by rho v into cp. And we can take the dt to the, uh, to the left hand side. Now if I integrate it from the time equal to zero, where my temperature is equal to Ti, initial temperature, whatever I had told you, that at initial temperature, T is equal to Ti. And at uh, time equal to T, 
the temperature becomes any value of t. So if I integrate this, obviously this becomes minus ln t infinity minus t. If I put the limits and remove the minus sign, then this becomes ln t infinity minus ti divided by t infinity minus t. And this is equal to h a rho v c p. Integrate this and we get the value of t. Now what I do is that I can flip the denominator and the numerator and the, flip the left hand side and the right hand side. So this becomes t minus t infinity and this becomes t i minus t infinity. Why is that? Because it's a hot body I said and so t infinity has got a smaller value in order to have a positive number out here. And because we have uh, switched the numerator and the denominator, we come up, uh, come up with a negative sign out here. So this becomes e to the power minus h a rho v c p into t. So this expression is known as the lump parameter model. So what does this expression give us? See h a rho v c p. These are physical properties and this is the heat transfer coefficient. So how does the temperature change with respect to time? Out here you notice that there is no position term. Because lump parameter model assumes that there is no change in the temperature because of position. The only change is because of time. So how does the temperature change due to change in time? So I've re rewritten this again out here. That is T minus T infinity, T i minus T infinity is equal to e to the power minus H a rho v c p into T. So this H a rho v c p together is written as a value of B. So if you see that b into t, gives, uh, it is epsilon, uh, exponential to the power of b into t. So b will have a unit of 1 by t. And hence, it is known as the time constant. The reciprocal of b has a time unit. And hence, this is called known as b is known as a time constant. Now, if I plot the temperature, this is the initial temperature of my ball or my body. And this is the temperature of the liquid. And if you see that these are the, uh, with respect to time, this is how it changes. The, how the temperature goes from the initial temperature to the temperature which is equal to the uh, temperature of the liquid. So these different lines represent different values of B. And as the B uh, value of B increases, you can see that the curvature becomes like this. So that means what? That if I take any time, uh, draw a straight line, for example, let me just get my pen again. If I draw a line like this, what do I see? That uh, it reaches, this body reaches a temperature which is closer to the temperature of the liquid quicker or more quickly if the value of B is large. Larger the value of B, faster it will reach the temperature of the, uh, of the body. That means the cold body that where it has been immersed. So let us see what we have written. The temperature of a body approaches the ambient temperature exponentially. All of these are exponential curves. The temperature of the body changes rapidly at the beginning, but slowly later on. So this change is much faster in the beginning, and slowly it becomes a more gentler slope as we go to larger uh, times. The value of large, a large value of B indicates that the body approaches T infinity in a short time. That's what I said at the, as the time, at, at any time if you do it, if the value of B is large, it will reach a temperature closer to the water temperature or liquid temperature if the value of B is large. The larger the value of exponent B, higher the rate of decay in temperature. That means faster will be the change in temperature. B is proportional to the surface area. B is proportional to the surface area, but inversely proportional to the mass and specific heat. So it, we can say, and it is, this is not surprising because it takes longer to heat or cool a larger mass, especially when it has a large specific heat. So a body with a large specific heat or large CP value, you will see, large CP value means me, will mean a small b. A small b means that it is, it takes longer for the body to cool down or heat up. Similarly, if the body is a large body, that means it's a large mass, then what will happen is that it will, uh, the value of B will be small. And again, it will take a long time for it to get heated up or cooled up. This is something we have seen practically also happen. And we can now also see this in the mathematical expression that we have. 
So let us look at a couple of problems uh, dealing with this uh, lump parameter model. <clears throat> so let us see what this problem says. So this problem tells us a 2 kg copper ball at 200 degrees centigrade cools down in ambient air at 29 degrees centigrade. That means we have the, bo the body, uh, the is my copper ball now. The copper ball, the mass of the copper ball is given to you, that it is 2 kg. The initial value temperature of the copper ball is mentioned to you, which is 200 degrees centigrade. And it is cooling down. That means you're keeping this hot copper ball in uh, at the atmospheric, that means in, in a particular room. And the ambient air of the room is 29 degrees centigrade. So obviously heat will go from the copper ball to the room. If it requires one hour to cool the ball down to 35 degrees centigrade. So in one hour, the temperature of the ball goes down to 35 degrees centigrade. Calculate the average value of the surface heat transfer coefficient. So in one hour, this temperature changes from 200 to 35 degrees centigrade. You're asked to find out the value of surface heat transfer coefficient or the value of H. As copper is an excellent conductor of heat, it may be assumed that the temperature in the ball remains uniform at any instant. When this uh, factor is written that the temperature in the ball remains uniform at any instant, that means the temperature remains uh, the same at any position. Hence, they are indicating to you that you have to use the lump parameter model for your calculations. And what are the other uh, information or values or data that is given to you? One is you're given the density of copper. Then you're given the specific heat of copper. And then you're given the thermal heat, ther sorry, thermal conductivity of copper. That is 0.377 watt per meter degree centigrade. See, so all these values are given to you. Now, if I try to put these values inside the lump parameter model, what do I get? So what are the values that we have with our mean? I have the value of T infinity, which is the temperature of air, which is 29 degrees centigrade. Initial temperature is 200. The final temperature that it has reached in one hour is 35 degrees centigrade. T is my time, that is one hour. H is the value that I have to calculate. CP value has been given to me. Density has been given to me. Area and volume is what uh, I don't have, but the mass is given to me. So let us see what we can write out here. Now, this is a sphere. So copper ball will essentially be a sphere. So the area is equal to 4 pi r square. And uh, the volume is equal to 4 third pi r cube. Now here, what do we have? I have a ratio of area to volume. So if I write A by V, divide A by V, that means 4 pi R squared divided by 4 third pi R cube, what I come up with is a value of 3 by R. So if I, know, I don't know the radius of the ball, however, I know the mass of the ball, that I know. So in order to find out the radius of the ball, what do I do? I know the volume is equal to 4 third pi R cube. And volume can also be written as mass by density. I know the mass and I also know the density. So if I put in these values, the only unknown term is the radius and I can find out what is the radius of the ball. So when I do that, what I and then I put these values inside this expression. So do I what do I get? 35 minus 29 divided by 200 minus 29 exponential minus, keep everything there, H and a by V is written as 3 by R. This is my 3 and this is my value of R. That is 0 0.30376 meters. Then we have, so 0 0.0376 meters means how many centimeters? It is 3.76 centimeters. So just imagine a 3.76 centimeter uh, uh, radius ball will not be a very large ball. And it is highly possible that the temperature remain uniform throughout the ball. Then this is the value of the density, and this is your uh, specific heat. The unit of specific heat is kilojoule per kg, so I've multiplied by 1,000 to get it into joule per kg. So instead of writing kilojoules. And if I want the value of H to come out in watts, which essentially means joule per second, the time also has to be put in terms of seconds. So one hour is written as 3,600 seconds. So if then I do the calculation and my value of heat transfer coefficient comes out to be 
39.98 watt per meter square degree centigrade. Oh, say degree centigrade should be the bottom, not the uh, exponent out here. So about a uh, value of about 40 is what I get for the heat transfer coefficient. So this is the most common uh, example or a common kind of uh, problems that you might get with lump parameter models. It, uh, it, it may so happen that you're given the time, you might be asked to find out what is the temperature after a certain period of time, or you may be asked to find out that if this is the temperature, how long will we take to reach that amount of time? And in all of this, what, are the, what is the information that you need? You need the, to know somehow the area and the volume, which essentially means you know to, need to know the size of my body. And you need to know the density, the specific heat capacity, and the, uh, the heat transfer coefficient of the outside that is happening, the rate of heat transfer that is happening. All right. <clears throat> so let us look at another problem, which is also to deal with uh, what is called, what we call as the lump parameter model. Now, what is this? Uh, let us read it out. A solid cube of th side 30 centimeter at an initial temperature of 1000 Kelvin is kept in a vacuum at absolute zero temperature. Calculate the time required to cool the cube to 500 Kelvin. And you are given the values of uh, the density, the specific heat capacity, Epsilon, that is emissivity, Stephens Boltzmann's constant, sigma. Now, in this problem, what do, what do we have again? This is a cube. Initial temperature of the cube is given. It is kept in vacuum and absolute zero. The moment this word vacuum comes into picture, you should realize that the rate of heat transfer cannot be by convection, and the only way heat can be transferred is by uh, by radiation, because the otherwise uh, conduction and convection does not happen through a vacuum. It needs a medium for heat to flow. Radiation is the only one which does not need any heat to flow. This is a, actually a gate problem. It's a very simple problem, but because they have put in the vacuum term out here, you have to remember that this expression or the relationship that we had developed for uh, the lump parameter model for example, let me go back and show you. This relationship we had developed, developed saying that the rate of heat loss is equal to the change in the internal energy of the body. And this rate of heat loss were assumed was assumed in, by means of convection because we are dropping this inside the liquid and either heat is gained or lost, whatever it is, but this is by means of convection. But uh, when we have a vacuum, this is not possible. The rate of heat loss can only be by means of radiation. So this expression and the final expression cannot be used out here. So we have to make a start right from this position. When we make the heat balance, when we are using the rate of heat transfer by means of radiation. So you know the radiation, if it is uh, whatever, whatever information that means we are given out here, that is epsilon sigma a t to the power 4 minus t a to the power 4. This is the rate of heat transfer by from a body by means of from one body to another by means of radiation. We are not given any information about uh, our view factor, etc. But you can understand that if I have a cube and it's radiating heat to the walls, whatever comes out of it will go to the wall. So the view factor will essentially become equal to one. This is equal to the change in the internal energy of the body. So if we can write this out, we can see what values we have. We have the value of epsilon. We have the value of sigma. Since this is a cube, you know the area of the cube is equal to 6a squared, where a is the side of the cube. The size is given to me. So the area is also available to me. The temperature is something I do not know. The ambient temperature we know is absolute 0. So this is the value of 0 is equal to minus uh, volume that is 0.3 cube because this is a cube and this is the size the size of the cube that is 0.3 meters into density into CP value change units to uh, uh, joule per kg so we multiply by the thousand is equal to change in temperature due to change in time so if I uh, these are all numbers so I can multiply these up this this large number multiplied by t to the power four is equal, sorry, not a large number actually, 10 to the power minus 9. So actually it's a very small number. Is into t to the power 4 is equal to minus 
six five six one zero delta by delta. Now you keep this delta uh, delta t uh, delta as on one side and remove all the numbers to another side and keeping the temperature terms together. We have this particular value of minus twenty one point four three two into ten to the power eleven, and you integrate it from. dt by t to the power 4 and initial temperature is 1000 kelvin you want the temperature to go down to 500 kelvin and you're trying to find out how long will it take this is equal to 0 to t dt so uh, if you remove the negative sign so 21.432 into 10 to the power 11 t to the power minus 3 by 3 after integrating this term and the limits are again i have not put the limits as yet but I, if i put the limits this term is here and uh, I've removed the negative sign, and uh, because I've removed, why why have I removed the negative sign? Because we'll come up with another negative sign out here when I do the integration. And this is divided by three, one by five hundred Q minus one by one thousand Q, and the time that comes out to be equal to is fifty thousand and eight seconds, which means thirteen point eight nine hours. So this is the time that will take. For this cube to come down from a temperature of 1,000 Kelvin to 500 Kelvin, if you are just kept inside a room where the temperature is absolute zero, and the rate of heat transfer is only by means of radiation, most of the times the rate of heat transfer will be only by means of convection. There is no radiation involved, but because they have used the term vacuum out here, we immediately know that it cannot be by radiation uh, by convection. it will definitely be by means of radiation and of course the value the fact that stephen boltzmann's constant and epsilon is given to you is also a clue which leads you to to this to solve the problem in a particular direction now we have been saying that about this lumped parameter model that we can use this lumped parameter model when the thermal conductivity is large or when the size of the body is small now the small and large are very relative terms you do not know what is large and what is small so we have to find out that when is it possible for us to actually use the lump parameter model correctly and under what conditions will that be not possible so let us try to understand that a little bit <clears throat> so what do we have out here the lump capacity type of analysis or the lump parameter model assumes a uniform temperature distribution throughout the solid body that means the surface convection resistance is large compared to the internal conduction resistance i had told you this little while back also so surface convection resistance is given by h and conductive resistance is given by k so it has been seen that when the value of h into xl by k is less than 0.1 then we can successfully use the lump parameter model on a body and what is xl xl is the characteristic length or the characteristic dimension of the body so if you remember your uh, the what is this h into xl by k this is called the byte number you i have taught you byte number before also this is the ratio of the internal conduction resistance to the surface resistance internal conduction resistance can be written as uh, 1 by k by xl and this can be written by 1 by uh, h that, that we can get that 1 by h in the denominator and we can take this k to the top and then write this as 1 by x by k that is the resistance to conduction is in the numerator and the resistance to convection is in the denominator ratio of the internal conduction resistance to the surface convective resistance to heat transfer so that is known as your byte number and if the value of the byte number is less than 0.1 then we can say that the lump parameter model can be used for your system if not we cannot so if you want to find out what is the value of xl that is the uh, characteristic dimension of the body then xl is equal to v by a that means for any so any body this is the uh, xl is the characteristic length given by the ratio of the volume to area now the for us, for example if you are talking about a sphere the volume is equal to 4 pi r cube by 3 and the area is 4 pi r square so this ratio comes out to be r by 3 if i have a long cylinder that means we are talking about the area of the cylinder multiplied by the length of the cylinder then we have pi d square by 4 cross sectional area 
into the length and this is the surface area is pi d into l so length cancels out pi cancels out one of the d's cancel out so what we are left with is d by 4 either that means one fourth of the diameter or half my radius this is for a long cylinder for a square rod that means when we are talking about this is my sphere this is my long cylinder and for a square rod essentially means if i have a rod like this and a square rod, something like this and where x is half the thickness so half the thickness out here is x here and the total thickness or the total side is equal to 2x so the volume is equal to 2x squared, 2x, uh, 2x into 2x, that means 2x squared, into the length, which is equal to L, which is out here, we have the L value, the length. And the area is equal to 4 times 2x plus 2x plus 2x plus 2x into F, perimeter into length. So we, if we cancel out this 2x terms with one of the 2x terms, the length with the length and the two cancels out with four and we, which we are leaving only two. So this is X by two. So this is the value of my, uh, these are the characteristic dimensions depending on what the shape of my body is. And if I put in the characteristic dimension and knowing my value of heat transfer coefficient and my thermal conductivity, and if this value is found to be less than 0.1, then we can say that we can successfully use the lump parameter model, otherwise not. So for a problem, when you want to know whether you can use the lump parameter, if they ask you, can you use the lump parameter model for this problem? What they want you to do is essentially they want you to calculate the Biot number and see whether the Biot number is equal to 0.1. For example, if I go back to this problem that we had done, yeah, this problem, if you look at the, the characteristic dimension of this, what was the characteristic, uh, characteristic dimension? If I want to calculate the Biot number for this problem, what was my Biot number? Once again, let me go back. H into XL by K. So we have H into X subscript L by K. So my H value is say equal to 40. And my uh, XL value what was XL equal to? XL is equal to volume by area. And uh, volume by area, that means R by 3. What is my R value? My R value is 0 0.0376. And you divide this by 3. And, you multi uh, and the denominator also has the K value. What was the K value? 0.377. See how much you get. Uh, let me do a quick calculation with my calculator. If I have, if you can do this calculation, you can see whether this value comes out to be less than 0.1 or not. That will help you calculate your Biot number. Now here, what we have is we have some uh, representative Biot numbers out here, some cases. So if I just blow this up and I'll show you. Suppose we have a three centimeter steel cube cooling in a, room, uh, in a room by means of air. So the K value is 40, H value is equal to seven, and the Biot number comes out to be 8.75, 10 to the power minus four, which is much less than 0.1. And hence you can happily use the uh, lump parameter model to analyze such a system. Then we have a five centimeter long glass cylinder cooled by air stream, which is at a rate of 50 meters per second. In such a case, the Biot number comes out to be 2.81. Lump parameter model cannot be used. The third case is same situation as two. That means a five centimeter cylinder. But instead of glass, we now have a copper cylinder. And because we have the copper cylinder, what happens is my K value has increased substantially. My H value has remained the same, but my K value has increased. And this leads to a value of the Biot number equal to 0 0.006. So this is again less than 0.1 and we can use the lump parameter model. Then we have a three centimeter hot copper cube submerged in water such, such that boiling occurs. 
In this case, we have very large H value, and the value of VIAP number is not less than 0.1, but close enough. That means 0.132. It, it will not be entirely accurate to use the, uh, the lump parameter model, but it is not definitely as bad as this value of 2.81. So these, for any situation where you want to calculate whether, above, whether the lump parameter model can be used or not, the first thing to do it would be to calculate the BIAT number if you have all the data with you and find out whether it is, uh, it is giving you an accurate answer or not. If not, then we cannot use the lump parameter model and then we have to use other models to tell us our, uh, or give us how the temperature changes with respect to time as well as position. So for the unsteady state heat transfer using other geometries, I will uh, start that in the next class, not today, on Thursday when we have a class at 12 o'clock. Otherwise, this is uh, what this is all I had wanted to tell you about the lump parameter model. And we did a couple of problems. And uh, I will see what I can give you a problem sheet again to do this. So go through this. If you have any queries, questions, ask me. Do you have any problems, any questions you want to ask me right now? Anybody? Fine. In that case, I will stop sharing right now. And uh, you can always, I again, send you this material. Uh, whatever material I've sent you, there are slight typographical errors in a few places. Correct it because I'm going to send you the video too. So you can correct it out there and see with those typo errors, you can correct it uh, with what the material I had already sent you. So uh, in the next class, we will continue doing what we were doing. That means this chapter.